Here the instructions say to write the following word problem as an equation and solve. For here it says the sum of two numbers is 180. One number is 18 bigger than the other. What are the two numbers? So for me this is almost kind of like a riddle. Okay, All they told me so far is that there are two numbers, which the sum of them, which means if I add them up, it's going to equal 180. Hmm. We also know that one number is 18 bigger than the other. Now what I like to do is I like to think of them as, in this case, maybe a small number and a big number. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and say S is going to be the small number. Um, I apologize for my sloppy handwriting in advance. And then let's say B is going to stand for the bigger number. I just put big number. Got it. The first thing that I know about these two numbers is that when I add these two numbers together, they're going to equal 180. So I'm going to say, hey, the small, which is S, plus the big number, which is B, is going to equal 180. Now there's an issue with this equation. Why? Because it's one equation with two variables. Now that's very difficult to solve. So what I need to do is try to narrow it down to only use one variable. So what I like to do is I like to keep the smaller value the way it is and manipulate the other one. So in this case, we're going to leave S, since it's a smaller number, we're going to leave that alone. But for B, I'm going to rewrite it. The big number, I know something about the bigger number. It says one number is 18 bigger than the other. So the bigger number could be thought of as, as hey, let's take the small number. Because it's 18 bigger, I'm just going to go ahead and add 18 to it. So now the bigger number is going to be S plus 18. So if we go back here, you could think of it as S is still S for small, but big is now going to be translated as S plus 18. Okay, so now that I have that, I can actually go and set it up to solve. So I'm going to bring down this S. Let's add it to s plus 18, which again represents the bigger number. It's going to equal 180. Now what am I going to do? Um, I can go in and check if I can distribute. I can't. Can I combine like terms? Yes. Here is 1s here and then 1s here. 1s plus 1s is going to give me 2s plus 18 equals 180. Now I'm going to try to undo the addition or subtraction. So in this case, I'm going to get rid of the constant. Uh, the opposite of adding 18 is subtracting 18 to both sides, which is going to leave me with 2s equals 162. Now I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this coefficient. It does mean 2 times s. So what's the opposite of multiplying by 2? It would be to divide both sides by 2. By doing this, it's going to leave me with s equals 30, oops, not 30, 81. Okay, so what did s stand for? Let's go back here. s stood for the small number. So the smaller number is going to be 81. Okay, so let's say over here s equals 81. And what about the bigger number? Well, the bigger number was s plus 18. You can kind of see it right here. The bigger number was s plus 18, but I also wrote it right here. So here I'm going to go ahead and write the bigger number. You would get that by taking S and by adding 18 to it. The nice thing about that is I know what S is. S is 81, so I'm just going to replace this with 81, add that to 18, and I'm going to get a grand total of 99. Now they didn't ask for a big or a small number. All they asked for was what are the two numbers? I'm going to claim it's 81 and 99. Now, one thing that I do like to do is check to see if these numbers work for what's being asked of us. Is one 18 bigger than the other? Yes. Do these two numbers add up to 180? Let's quickly check. What's 81 plus 99? If I add those together, do they equal 180? Yes. So it's a pretty good sign. So I'm going to go with the answer that the two numbers are 81 and 99. Okay, so for number six, the instructions are exactly the same. It says here, Eric is nine years older than Barry. The sum of their ages is 31. How old are Eric and Barry? So once again, um, 
we're going to add them because sum means we're going to add them and it's going to give us a grand total of 31. But what exactly are we adding? We're adding the ages of two people. The first one's Eric and the second one's Barry. So right now, let's say, let's use E for Eric, okay? And let's say B for Barry. Now you'll notice I like to use variables that kind of correlate to what I'm trying to look for. It makes a little more sense for me to do that. Okay, so now I do know that if I take Eric's age and I add it to Barry's age, it should give me a grand total of 31. But once again, this equation isn't going to help me much. Why? Because um, there's two variables, but there's only one equation. Now with one equation, it is typically easier if you only have one variable. So let's try to change that. So here, what could I do? Well, I can either change Eric or I could change Barry. But remember, from the previous example, a good tip would be to keep the smaller number. So in this case, they're not numbers, they're ages. So in this case, I'm going to keep the younger person with that variable. So since Eric is nine years older than Barry, I'm going to go ahead and keep Barry as B. But I'm going to change Eric's age. Eric is nine years older than Barry. So what would I do for Eric? For Eric, I'm going to have to take Barry's age, and because he's older, I'm going to have to add. How much older is he? Nine. So once again, for Eric, we're just going to go ahead and use the letter E. Sorry, just kidding. For Barry, we're going to go ahead and use the letter B for Barry. We're going to keep that exactly the same. Why are we keeping it for Barry? Because he is younger, which means it's a smaller value. But for Eric, we're going to change him to B plus 9. Now, what's the nice thing about doing that? Well, by doing this, now all you have are two variables, which makes it easier to solve. Okay, so now that I have that, I'm just going to go through the normal steps. Can I distribute? No. Can I combine like terms? Yes, we have one B here and one B here. So I have a grand total of two Bs plus a nine, maybe I should be a little neater, 2b plus nine equals 31. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this constant. Um, the way I do that is by undoing this plus nine by subtracting nine to both sides, which leaves me with 2b equals 22. Now we're gonna get rid of this coefficient. It does mean two times b, so the inverse would be to divide both sides by two, and I'm left with b equals 11. Let's go back. What did B stand for? B stood for Barry. So in this case, it's to, it stands for Barry's age. So I'm going to say Barry is 11. But um, we're not just interested in Barry's age. We also want to know how old Eric is. So how old was Eric? Well, some of you could probably just do this in your head. We know that Eric is nine years older. So nine years older than Barry, who is 11, it would be 20. Now, for some of you, you may not understand exactly how I got that, so what could you do? Well, you can go back here and say, okay, well, Eric is B plus 9. So if you want, you can say, hey, Eric was B plus 9, and then plug in what you know. Well, I know B, for Barry, he's 11, so I would have plugged in 11 here. I would have added 9, and I would have gotten E equals 20. So that's the other way of doing it. So if you want to plug the values back in to get an age, that works as well. But that's what I would have. But again, let's kind of check to see if things make sense or not. Um, is Eric really nine years older than Barry? Yep, that's true. Um, do their ages add up to 31? Let's double check. Uh, one plus zero is one. One plus two is three. Yes, they add up to 30. So, so far, so good. I would definitely go with my answer, which is Barry is 11 years old and Eric is 20 years old. Okay, let's take a look at this one. It says a cable is 101 meters long, is cut into two pieces so that one piece was 33 meters longer than the other. Find the length of each piece of the cable. Okay, so for here, it, there's so many different ways you can set this up, but for me personally, I'm going to think of it as, okay, if I have two pieces of cable, and they were cut up and one is 33 meters longer than the other, I'm gonna have a short piece and then I'll have a long piece. So in this case, I'm gonna use S for the short and L 
for the long. Now, could you have used different variables? Absolutely. But this is what makes sense to me, so I'm going to go ahead and choose that. Now, with these two pieces of cable, um, since it, it, it was originally 101 meters long and I cut it, if I put these two pieces back together, the short plus the long piece, it should still equal 101 meters. Okay, but once again, you're going to notice two variables isn't exactly helpful. Um, when you have one equation, it is best to only have one variable to solve for. So what should I do? Well, I like to keep the smaller value as the variable. So in this case, um, hopefully you understand the smaller value is going to be the shorter side. So let's go ahead and keep S as short, but let's rename the long side. Well, the long side is going to be 33 meters longer than the other. So I'm going to have to take the shorter side, which is S, and then I'm going to have to go ahead and add 33. So let's just do a quickly rem quick reminder. The short side is still just S, but the long side is now S plus 33. So I'm just going to write that just to remind myself the different pieces. So now that I have that, I can go ahead and bring everything down and solve. I can't distribute, but I can combine like terms. S plus S is 2S plus 33 is going to equal 101. We're going to get rid of this constant first. The opposite of adding 33 would be subtracting 33 from both sides, which leaves me with 2s equals 68. Now I'm going to get rid of the coefficient. This does mean 2 times s, so the opposite would be to divide by 2 instead of multiplying, which leaves me with s equals 34. Now, real quick, S stood for the shorter side, so I'm going to go ahead and say the shorter side is 34, um, let's say, meters, okay? But what about the long side? How do I figure out the long side? Well, here, if you recall, we wrote that the long side was S plus 33, so I'm going to go ahead and do that in my side work. The long side is S plus 33. That's good because I know what S is now. S was the short side. The short side was 34 meters. So if I take those 34 meters and I add the 33, I'm going to get grand total of 67 meters. Now, please be careful to not answer it as S equals L equals. I personally chose those variables myself. I need to make sure I answer the question. So the question was find the length of each piece of the cable. So since it didn't ask for any particular type of, you know, the short or the long, I would just say the two lengths are 34 and 67 meters. Maybe I should put meters here. Let's try that one more time. Meters. Okay, now let's really quick double check to see if everything works out. Is this one 33 more than this one? Yes. Do they add up to uh, 101? Let's see, 34 plus 67. Add it together, and yes, it does check out. So I'm definitely going to go with the two lengths of the cables are 34 meters and 67 meters. Okay, ooh, number eight. It says the sum of three numbers is 50. The second number is four times the first, and the third is two more than the first. Ooh, okay. So for me, this one's a little trickier because there's three numbers involved. So if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and pick these variables. I'm going to say um, F for the first, S for the second, and maybe T for the third. Now, one thing I want to mention is with the T, you kind of want to put a hook at the end because sometimes when you don't, it kind of looks like a plus sign. So just a quick tip. Okay, so I do know that the sum of these three numbers is 50. So I'm going to say, hey, the first number plus the second number plus the third number should equal 50. But again, you only have one equation, which means it's best if you only use one variable. Now, here's what I want to do. I want to write things in terms of what's given. Now, typically, I would use the variable as the smaller value, but sometimes when there's more things involved, it might get a little bit more difficult to do.
So I'm going to teach you something, another tip of how you can solve problems like this. So the first piece, first piece of information is telling you about the second number. It says the second number is four times the first number. Okay, so let's try this out. If I rename the second one as four times the first, I would do four times the first, which is F. So I would write it as 4F. Okay, let's see if this works out. So right now, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to keep F as the first number. And I'm, try I'm changing the second number to 4F. Okay, so we did that. And it says the third is two more than the first. Okay, so the third, let's try this again. So the third, okay, let's just look at the third. The third is two more than the first. Okay, so two more makes me think that I'm adding. But what am I adding to? I'm adding to the first number. So I have to take the first number. I'm going to change the colors real quick be consistent. We're going to take the first number, which was F, and I'm going to add 2. Hopefully you remember from 7th grade, more than was a switch word, and that's why we don't do 2 plus F. We do F plus 2, because you're adding 2 to something. Okay, so we're going to rename third as F plus 2. Now, this was nice, because everything was referencing the first number. The second was 4 times the first. The third is 2 more than the first so that worked out actually very nicely so if you bring everything else down f plus the 4f that was being replaced for the second plus f plus 2 which got replaced for the third is going to equal 50. got it um i'm going to check if i can distribute which i can't now i'm going to check if i can uh, combine like terms I have one f four f and another f so i have a grand total of six f so we have six f plus 2 equals 50. I'm going to get rid of my constant. Instead of adding 2, I'm going to subtract 2 to both sides. 6f equals 48. Now I'm going to get rid of my coefficient. This means 6 times f. The inverse of multiplying is dividing. So when you divide, you're left with f equals 8. So what does that mean? My first number, which was f, I'm going to say the first is 8. Got it. My second number, I'm going to do some side work. My second, whoops. My second number was 4F. So I'm going to say the second number was 4 times F. What's F? F was 8. So since it's 4 times as much, the second number is going to be a grand total of 32. What about the third number? The third number you'll see here, we wrote as F plus two, so we're gonna put F plus two. Uh, what was F? F one more time was eight, so I'm gonna plug in an eight there and add two, what's eight plus two? It's 10. So these are the numbers that I have, but let's real quick check to see if they all work out. Is the second four times the first? Absolutely. Is the third two more than the first? Yes. Do they have a sum of 50? Let's double check. 8 plus 2 plus 0 is 10. Carry the 1. 1 plus 3 plus 1 is 5. So it does check out. So I'm pretty confident that the three numbers are 8, 32, and 10. Notice they didn't ask in any particular order. So I can just go ahead and say that the three numbers are 8, 32, and 10. Okay, let's try one more problem. For number 9, it says the perimeter of a triangle is 70 inches. The second side is twice as long as the first side. The third side is 5 inches shorter than the second side. How long is each side? Okay, let's try this out. Well, it's a triangle, okay, and they already kind of called them first, second, and third. So I'm going to go ahead and do what I did last time. I'm going to say F for the first, we're going to use S for the second, we're going to use T for the third. Now again, could you use whatever variables you want? Absolutely, but for me this makes it a little bit easier to kind of correlate which is which. 
Okay, so because it's a perimeter of a triangle, if you didn't remember, perimeter is basically you adding up all the side lengths of the shape. So in this case, since it's a triangle, there are three sides. We're going to take the first side, we're going to add it to the second side, then we're going to add it to the third side, and it should give us a grand total of 70 since that was the perimeter. Okay, so the first piece of information that we know is that the second side is, so let's try to break up the second side. What do we know about the second side? The second side is twice as long as the first. Okay, so since it's twice as long as the first, which we already called F, I'm going to go ahead and call it 2F because it's twice as long as the first. Okay, so let's, let's try this out real quick. So we're keeping F as, sorry, first as F, and we're changing the second to 2F. Let's see if this works. There's no guarantee, but let's see. Okay, the third side is five inches shorter than the second side. Okay, so we're going to have to break up T. T, uh, T, which was the third side, by the way. The third side is five inches shorter than. So that means I'm going to subtract five. But what am I subtracting five from? I'm subtracting five from the second side. But wait. I already know the second side. What are we calling the second side? We're, call, we're officially calling it 2F. So I have to take the 2F for the second side, but remember, since it's five inches shorter, I'm gonna have to subtract five. So this one's a little confusing for some, so I'm gonna recap it one more time. So the third side is five inches shorter than, so automatically, since it's shorter than, I'm thinking of subtracting five, but I just gotta figure out what am I subtracting five from? Well, I'm subtracting 5 from the second side. Ooh, what was the second side? Remember, we call the second side 2F. So that's what I had to subtract 5 from, 2F. Okay, so now that I have that, I'm just going to bring everything else down. Oh, well, let me go ahead and rename the third side as 2F minus 5. Got it. So everything else comes down. F plus 2F plus 2F minus 5 should equal 70. Can I distribute? No. Can I combine like terms? Yes. I'm going to combine 1F with 2F with 2F, which gives me a grand total of 5F minus 5 equals 70. We're going to have to get rid of the constant, so the opposite of subtracting 5 is going to be to add 5 to both sides. So we have 5F equals 75. Now we're going to get rid of the coefficient. This means 5 times F. So the inverse of multiplying by 5 would be to divide both sides by 5. So in this case, I'm going to be left with um, 15. Okay, let me just double check that real quick to make sure I didn't make a mathematical error. Okay, perfect. It would be 15. Now, I need to make sure I answer the question. It says, how long is each side? So right now, F, what did F stand for? F stood for the first side. So I know the first side is 15. The second side, what is the second side? Well, the second side is 2F. So I'm just going to side work. The second side was 2F. So in this case, we're going to do 2 times F, which was 15. So the second side was 30, which makes sense because it was twice as long. Okay, what about the third side? Well, the third side was 2F minus 5. So I'm going to do it here where I have some space. We're going to put 2F minus 5. So the third side is going to be 2 times 15, which we already figured out was 30, and then we're going to minus 5. So 30 minus 5 is 25. So real quick, let's kind of check to see if all of these numbers work out. Is the second side really twice as long as the first? Yes, the second side is really twice the size of the first, okay? Is this third side five inches shorter than the second? Well, is it five shorter than the second? Yes. Now, the other thing I want to check is, is the sum, basically because of perimeter, do they all add up to 70? Let's say five plus five is 10, carry the one. We have 2 plus 3 is 5 plus 2 is 7, so they do add up. So what is the length of each side? I would say the length of each side. Nope, nope. I want to say of each side. The length of the triangle might be a better option. 
are, in this case, 15, 30, and 25. And they're all in inches. I'm sorry, I forgot to write that in. But they're all in inches. Okay, so hopefully some of these examples helped you out. If not, there is another video if you want to check that out to see if that is more helpful. Thank you so much for tuning in. Bye.